Well, hi there. Uh, my name is Billy Hicks, and, and I'm, I'm just going to share a story with you. Um, years ago, I was contacted by Lane Perriman to see whether or not I would be willing to do computer training uh, for members at the Correction Academy. And this is when the Corrections Academy was just becoming the Academy. And, um, and it was for computer training. And um, so I told Lane Perriman, oh yes, I'd be glad to do it. And I know that this was during the summer. School was not in session at Montlow College. And so the day of the first session came. And, um, and I know that it was supposed to last from nine to noon. It got to be about 15 minutes till nine. And so I literally left the building, uh, the inside of the building, because I had prepared the computer lab for these uh, students. And, and I will tell you, this is in the early days of computing. There were no mice. This is when you literally typed in commands. And got to be about nine o'clock and nobody. Got to be about 9.15, still nobody. And to be honest with you, I was a little nervous about it. And I kept thinking about, oh, this is great because my day will be shorter. I'm pretty sure I had to go back inside and make a phone call that, and somebody at the academy said, oh, they're coming, they're in the bus. So sure enough, I go back outside and wait. But I'm going to say that the hour is now about 9.30. And I see this short little kind of tan looking bus driving into the parking lot. And they literally pull right up to the sidewalk where I'm standing and waiting. And uh, these gentlemen start to unload off the bus. And I will tell you that the first thing I noticed was the alcohol that is on their breath. And most all of them had kind of a leather pouch, which reminded me of what uh, a Bible my, you know, the, the, these pouches, these leather covers that people put in their, uh, they put their Bibles in. Almost everybody had one. And I thought that was fascinating. Um, and so I kind of spoke to them a little bit outside and I told them that we'd be coming inside if they just followed me and I'd set them down and we'd, we'd get to work. I knew we were a little late, but no problem. We'd still cover our basic material. So I carried them to the computer lab, and it was very apparent that several of them had quite a bit to drink, and, uh, and it was 9.30 in the morning, and, um, and, and I knew to, I was told to expect that they would not know hardly anything about computers, and so certainly that was true, because they kept staring at them, and I said, well, we're going to get started today, and they were grumbling, and they were talking, but they didn't really communicate to me at all. And so I was trying to get them, and this was in the days when you had to type something in, and I have no idea. Maybe we had turned them on, and they had to type in DIR for a directory. I, I have no idea. It wasn't much. And they were grumbling so bad. And I thought, I have never stood in front of a group of people that seemed to be so upset. But anyway, we got them to type in the first thing and the second thing, and I thought, oh, we're not going to get very far because this is taking a lot of time to do almost nothing. And you could tell that they were frustrated, and, and I was really taking it easy, being extra kind, and all of a sudden a person, and I don't think he was on the front row, but I think he was on the second row, he shouts out, he blurts out, I'm just going to shoot this thing. <laughs> And I couldn't believe it because in their pouches are guns. And, and he unzips his pouch and I realized that it's a gun. And, and I also realized that means everybody's got guns. And it's like, whoa, 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 you know, whoa. And it's like, rawr, rawr, and you've never heard such grumbling and growling in all your life. Well, come to find out. The people who were supposed to be in computer training got dumped off at the shooting range. The people who were going to the shooting range got dumped off at Milo College. They didn't want to be with me, not at all. And so we went outside and um, they were heavy smokers. And that was back in the days when a lot of people lit up. Uh, it just looked like a chimney fire. Uh, and they were all out playing with their guns. And, and of course, 
this is Montlow College, and it was a much smaller campus then, and it was kind of in the woods, and they kept talking about, well, we could go over here in the woods and shoot something. And, and they would kind of look at me kind of like, I kept thinking, I think they're looking at me to shoot me. Um, I went inside, I tried to call the bus, but this was kind of in the days of the earliest cell phones. The technology wasn't there. They didn't know where the bus driver was. He was just riding around, I think. And so I had to babysit this crew until the bus finally came at about noon. Um, but they were funny. I, I, I enjoyed their company. We certainly didn't ask them to come back inside. They just enjoyed playing with their guns outside and they didn't shoot anybody or each other. But that was my experience at uh, my first computer training. And do you want me just to yeah. go right into it? Didn't you tell me something about Billy McCorder? Oh, uh, I did. A, a robot? Yes. Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, so my first training did not go very well. But sure enough, I'm going to say it was two or three weeks later, I had another training, and it, was, it were people that wanted to know something about computers, so things went well. So we're kind of on the right foot, and I did two or three training sessions. And I'm going to say this was my fourth or fifth session. And so I'd gotten to where I kind of knew what to expect. And, and I had tried to incorporate some things because for the most part, these people could not hardly tolerate three hours of instruction in computers. That was, we had to break it up. We had to do different things. Uh, and as a teacher, that was my job to try to find other things to do. Well, we at Montlow College, they had bought us a, a small robot. It kind of looked like um, that uh, one of the little short uh, trash can looking robot in Star Wars. He was shorter than that, and he was called a Hero Robot, H-E-R-O. And I'm sure it was an acronym, but beats me what it stood for. It had one arm, and it had a flat top, and it had a sensor on it. It could certainly tell if there was light or dark. And it also had a sensor that was like a distance sensor so that if it was headed towards something and something was in its way, it knew to stop. And so the last couple of groups that I'd had from the academy, I had this robot program so it would kind of just march back and forth in front of them, but I put a box over its head. And so it was sitting there in the dark and if I walked over and lifted the box off of it, it would sense light and it would take off and do its thing. I had a gentleman by the name of Billy McWhorter. And he was quite the character because he was obviously blind as a bat. Because we would try to type things in the computer and he would he would get this close to the computer screen. So it, it was a hoot. And, and I would get kind of tickled because during breaks, his own men would kind of make fun about, he couldn't see anything, but he didn't want anybody to not. He, he thought that nobody really knew that he couldn't see it. But I still remember that it was after one of the, after the second break, we'll say. I told them I had something special for them. So I walked over into the corner of the room and I lifted off the box. And sure enough, Hero the Robot comes to life. And the first thing he does before he takes off running across the floor is, my name is Hero Robot. And off he goes. And he, he's just a mechanical device. He's just going back and forth. Well, it always brought a, a smile to people's face. They liked the robot. Well, it runs right by Billy McWhorter's chair. And, and he's down looking at it. And, uh, and he raises his hand, and I still remember it. And, uh, and I said, yes, sir. And he said, I got two things I want this robot to do. He said, and so he wanted to know how much they cost. And I said, well, you know, he's not capable of doing a lot. And, now, this is old technology. It was about $3,000 for this robot, which a robot, a kid's robot today would run circles around this one. And he said, well, that's not too bad. He said, here's what I want to do. One thing is I want to, to hire several of them and have them deliver the food trays. He said, when you deliver food to prisoners, they often throw the food back at you. And he said, this guy wouldn't care. We just wash him down. And so I said, well, yes, sir. And I said, I really think this is probably beyond the capability of these robots. Well, I, you know, I want one bad. Now, 
the other item, and I have to admit, I don't remember all the details, but this, this was at a time, and this would have been the early 90s, uh, this was at a time that it had not been that long ago since we had, uh, at that time, they, they had been a, a prison uprising in one of the prisons here in Tennessee, and I don't remember which one it was. And that was kind of the talk of the group. And so Billy McWhorter said, now it only had one arm. It only had an arm, and, and instead of a hand, it, it kind of had like, a, a th it was shaped like this, two claws and one, and it, it could clamp things and such. And he said, could it shoot a gun? And I said, well, I don't think so. I said, but the worst part, is that it couldn't aim it because it didn't have good eyesight. Of course, I was thinking about who I was talking to. And he said, oh, I know what I want to do with them. He said, if we ever have another prison uprising, he said, I want a bunch of them. And I'll arm every one of them. And he said, and I'll announce over the bullhorn that we're going to send the robots in if they don't surrender. And he said, in that way, there are only bad people in there. They'll just go in and start shooting. And uh, he said, you know, whatever they hit won't matter. And, uh, and I just kind of smiled. I thought, wow, I have never been presented with this before. So that is my Billy McWhorter story. Uh, I, God rest his soul. I'm not sure if he's even on this planet anymore or not. But he certainly provided a whole lot of entertainment on that training day.